Solution Behavior on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. So we've seen and, and hinted in uh, the previous videos that we can have two solutions or two liquids and we can mix them together into a solution of some proportion of each of these. So for this example, consider let's make a Jack and Coke. So we're going to mix some amount of Jack Daniels in with some amount of Coke. We're going to make our mixed drink. All right. Well, when we mix these two solutions or mixtures together into the master mix, if that's what you want to call it, we have certain thermodynamic parameters that can be used to describe the process. And some of them mean exactly what you would think they mean. And since we're mixing two things together to make a conglomerate, we usually put a subscript here on any one of these thermodynamic parameters that just says mix, and you'll abbreviate it as mix. All right, so let's discuss what these are. So if we want to calculate the free energy change for taking these two components and mixing them together in some proportion, we can calculate the delta G of mixing. The first thing we'll want to do is we we'll want to find out what the mole fractions are of each component. So suppose, suppose we mix uh, have a mole fraction of whiskey of 0.4 and a mole fraction of coke of 0.6. What we would do is we would take the natural log of the first one, 0.4, and this is summation notation, so we would end to the natural log of the other one, 0.6, and whatever we get for that, we then multiply by the temperature, multiply by the gas constant, and multiply times the total number of moles. Okay? And when we do all that, we're going to get the overall free energy change. Now, in general, these mole fractions, remember, are all less than 1, because the mole fraction can only range between 0 and 1. So when you take the natural log of a fraction that is less than one, still positive but less than one, you get a negative number. And so when you add a bunch of negative numbers, it's still negative. So you're multiplying that by three positive numbers. So our delta G, we're gonna to expect to be negative every single time, okay? Because assuming that these, uh, these components will mix, then of course the mixing is spontaneous if they do mix. So that's why we expect this to be negative every single time, okay? Then we can calculate the entropy of mixing. What we do is we take the expression for the Gibbs free energy and we take its partial derivative with respect to temperature. Okay, and we have to throw a negative sign in front of here. Um, what that means we just take this expression right here and differentiate with respect to t. But we only have one term that's dependent on t, it's this t to the first power. So it's a simple power rule derivative and that results in the t just disappearing basically. So the entropy associated with mixing is equal to negative nr times this same sum of the natural log of the mole fractions that you have from the free energy. We can also calculate a delta V of mixing, and V stands for volume here. Okay, so this is kind of hinting at the next video that we're gonna cover, but sometimes you can add two different components together, and suppose, for example, this was five milliliters, this blue one is five milliliters, so we would expect adding them together, we get 10 milliliters, right? Because you're adding them together. But in practice, that doesn't always happen. We may get, in actuality, what's here in purple, which is actually a little bit less than 10 milliliters. In general, the delta V of mixing is the difference between the volume that you expect versus what you actually get. And in general, this can be calculated by taking the derivative of the Gibbs free energy of mixing with respect to pressure. Now, when you have an ideal solution, something that behaves exactly as we would expect it to, then when you add these two 5 milliliter components together, you do get something that's 10 milliliters, and that's also what you expect. So for ideal solution mixing, the delta V of mixing is zero, okay? However, for non-ideal mixing, which we'll look at in a minute, it does not have to be zero, and if it's certainly non-ideal, then it won't be zero, okay? Now, the last parameter that we have is the delta H, the enthalpy of mixing. Now, from the second law of thermodynamics, which this is in a slightly different form, we can find that the delta H of mixing is equal to the delta G of mixing plus the temperature times the delta S of mixing. So, usually what you would do is calculate the delta G first, then calculate the delta S, and then you can plug those components in here and calculate the enthalpy of mixing. Now, what I want to show you is that the enthalpy of mixing for an ideal solution is zero. And the way you do that is by plugging the various expressions in for delta G and delta S. So what is delta G of mixing? It's nRT times the sum of the natural log of mole fractions. 
We just plug that in here. Delta G is nRT times the sum of the natural log of all the mole fractions in the final solution. Then we have to add on T delta S. Well, the delta S is negative nR times the sum of the natural log of the mole fractions. So I put that right here, nR times the sum of the natural log of the mole fractions, and I've thrown this negative sign out in front. But remember, it's T delta S. So I have to put an extra T in here. And notice we get nRT times this summation minus nRT times that summation. And obviously, when you have the same thing minus itself, you get zero. So for an ideal mixing with, with ideal solution, the delta H of mixing is zero. Again, just like in the case of the delta V of mixing, the delta H of mixing for non-ideal solution, non-ideal mixing, is not going to be zero. So in general, if final comparison of ideal mixing versus ideal mixing, the delta G and delta S uh, expressions, free energy and entropy, are the same regardless of what you're dealing with. Okay? Um, delta G is nRT times the sum of the natural logs of all the mole fractions in the mixture. And the entropy of mixing is the negative partial derivative of free energy of mixing with respect to temperature, which for an ideal solution is negative nR times this summation. But remember, for ideal mixing, delta V of mixing and delta H of mixing are both zero, but not necessarily when you have non-ideal mixing and non-ideal solutions. Okay? So in general, these are these dynamic parameters for mixing, and we'll actually do an example problem in the next video, so make sure to tune in for that. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.